Now, Maybe. in addition to playing for your home countries and uh, home country uh, cities in Toronto, Montreal, you also got to represent your country at the Olympics. And you coach. I, I thought you played there, but no, you slipped through. You coached in the WBC a couple of times. So is it a different kind of like I, I always think it's a travesty when baseball comes in and out of the Olympics. I'm telling I tell people if baseball is not an Olympic sport, then there's no point of the Olympics, in my opinion. Like that is the sport. But we know it's more about politics and getting the star players there than about the quality of the game. But going to the Olympics, going to the WBC, how is it different than Major League Baseball as far as the vibe, the people, everything, would you say? Totally different. Steve, do you ever get a chance to play for USA? I had, I did not. Uh, didn't have the opportunity. I didn't go to college, so I got drafted out of high school. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, the USA teams were very small back then. And being from New York, you just don't get the exposure like some of these other parts of the country, like Arizona, California, Florida, where they see these players all the time. How about later on in your your career? Like, uh, as far as... Never. You know, no, you know, no. three years in the minors and then to the big leagues. And then, uh, you know, just kind of did that until, until the very end. But uh, always thought that it would be a, a tremendous experience to represent your country and to, you know, not worry about what's on the back of your jersey and always worry about what's on the front. Um, it would be really special. Just never had the opportunity or uh, in a position to do that. Well, you, 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 uh, Jonathan, you've talked a, 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 a lot about, you know, different games that I've, I've played in and, and, you know, hitting a home run here or playing there. Probably my most cherished baseball moment was with the Canadian national team. Uh, we were we were in uh, Panama, and we qualified for the Olympics. And on the bus on the way back, we were singing the national anthem. We had thirty five guys, and and we're singing the national anthem on our way back to the hotel to to get rosy faced and 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 be happy. Um, that was probably my most cherished moment as far as baseball is concerned because that was a group of guys that that there there was only one agenda and there was there was like like Steve said playing for this playing for your country um i i didn't get a, a, an opportunity when i was young but uh you know i was 39 years old and got that opportunity i i couldn't pass it up now, Cooperstown did not come calling, but you are a two-time Hall of Famer in Canada, correct? Canadian Hall of Fame and the Canada Baseball Hall of Fame? I'm sorry? Excuse me? As far as getting inducted into the uh, into the Hall of Fame in Canada, the Canadian Hall of Fame and the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. Well, I don't know about the... Uh, no one invited me to the Canadian Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. When I was mean, that? The internet believes that you you were inducted there as well. So go oh, figure. Smally. I missed that one. Yes. <laughs> maybe that was, was maybe, that? maybe that was during uh, COVID. Maybe no, that was during uh, COVID. Canadian the baseball. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. Yes, the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, that was that was obviously very special. It's in St. Mary's. It's about an hour or so uh, from where I grew up. So I got a chance to see people that I, that I grew up with. Uh, there was there were teachers that uh, you know <laughs> that I had as as a, uh, a young kid. There were teachers in the audience. There was uh, my big brother was there. Obviously, my family was there. Um, that was uh, that was very very special. And sharing uh, a stage with uh, I believe George Bell and Tim Raines. Yes, yes, you know it's. Um, uh, just to be, just to be, you know, uh, in, in this, in the, looked at in that light or considered in that light, uh, for me, uh, I, I didn't think that, that baseball was, did I love playing when I was young? Absolutely. You have to love it. You have to love it. But, uh, did I envision myself making a career out of it? No, because no one did. No one, you know, no one that I grew up with did. Yeah, hockey, sure. Baseball, no. 
uh, and uh, just to be able to sit back and say, you know what, I, I could I have been better? Sure. Yeah, could I have lifted weights and gotten stronger and bigger and stronger? Sure, I could have. Could I have, you know, uh, watched more video on? Sure, I could have. Uh, could I have done this? Could I? No, I, I always thought that if you enjoy playing the game and it's a skilled game and you work on your craft, that you can overcome. There's a lot of big, strong dudes that work for UPS. Uh, so you can be a better baseball player than that big, strong guy. And again, going back to our initial conversation when we started is how, play the game. How, how can I help a team win? You know, I used to go to the ballpark and think, okay, how can I help my team win today? Every day. And it showed. And I got to say, as, as a fan in the stands, you were there my first game, like I said, and got to follow you how throughout. How old were you, Jonathan? How old were you? I was a ripe, uh, almost 11 years old. I know. Come on. Well, listen, man, I'm almost 50, so it doesn't really matter now. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Uh, but I got to say the perception from the fans always and watching the, the commentators reading newspapers, I used to read the papers religiously when I was a kid and I was looking at the box scores. People always said you always had a smile on your face. You always looked like you had a good time, never saw a scowl, saw you on the TV, saw you in the stands at the games, and you just always looked like you were a happy person. And I got to say that was pretty inspiring. Oh, I agree. I mean, what uh, I was 20... Oh, okay. I was still 21 years old when I got to the big leagues, and I turned I turned 22 uh, when I you know, my very first month, uh, May May 1st, 87. So I turned 22 the 24th of May. Um, I started actually started playing baseball when I was 15. Wow. So, yeah, I was a fast pitch softball player. And fast pitch back then in Canada was a bigger sport than baseball. Right. <clears throat> so, um, I, and I almost quit baseball after my first year because it was too slow. It was, it was easy. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm good with this game. Um, so, it was a very fast track. I was just playing. Why not be happy? And all of a sudden, in my very first paycheck, I think it was for like $5,000. And I was like, man, I'm rich. <laughs> That's how I felt the first time I got my first big league check too. Yeah, I'm rich. Yes, I made it. Um, so yeah, why not be happy? I remember Dave Parker sitting in the uh, cab outside the Sheridan at the time. And he was with the Brewers. He had just uh, been traded over there, I believe. And he had just pulled out of his wallet the giant wad of 50s. And it was red bills in Canada. And he was looking at them. And he's like, what is this, Monopoly money? But he had a whole whack of them. It's just different times, different kind of guy. As we end today's episode, Rob, and you've shared so much with us. I've been so gracious to share your stories and your career. I got some rapid fire for you. because I got four questions that are really burning on my mind. I can't find this anywhere on the internet. And I got to know. The truth and the fans got to know the truth and Steve has to know the truth. Number one, numbers you wore during your career. Two, 12, 16, 20, 22, 25, 29, 40. Anyone have a particular significance or why you had them? Well, obviously two for Ducey and 22 for Ducey. Uh, the other ones, 40 was, was just given to me. And then 20, uh, I got 20 my second year and in 88, uh, I, I got 20, and they said I was half the player I used to be uh, because I was 40 the year before. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, there's no I, – I, that didn't – it didn't bother me. What, whatever number they had, they had. Question number two. You played for some pretty cool managers. Jimmy Williams, Jimmy with one M. Felipe Alou, Larry Boa. Terry Francona, Lou Pinella, remember him. Kevin Kennedy, Buck Rogers, Cito Gaston. That's a pretty good fraternity over there. I really like Buck Rogers, by the way. He always seemed like a very good guy. I stopped and talked to him once on the street, and I just recognized, hey, you're Buck Rogers. 
and we just started chatting it up. But uh, any particular manager sticks out to you? I, I mean, they all played their parts, but anyone in particular really had an effect on your career? Any stories that you want to share quickly? Well, Cito, uh, obviously Cito, two-time you know, world champion, you know, legend, legend in Toronto. Uh, legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they love him in Toronto. He was, uh, I'll, I'll share one story when he was the hitting coach. All right. In 1987, he was the hitting coach. 1988, he was the hitting coach. So we were in Texas and it was 180 degrees out. Uh, he was throwing BP at three o'clock in the afternoon. We had early BP and, you know, the scrubinis could hit during the early time. Well, he was out throwing BP and he was sweating bullets. All right. Hey, Rob, put a ball on the outside corner. And I and I shook my head like, okay. And he said, put a ball on the outside corner. And I was like, okay. Well, I envisioned or I thought he meant visualize the ball <laughs> on the outside corner. He actually wanted me to physically put a baseball <laughs> on the outside corner so that he had a target to throw to. Well, that was the last time he ever talked to me about hitting <laughs> Because I was the dumbest player of all time. So he walked around the L screen. He slammed a ball on, on the plate. And he said, I said, put a ball on the outside corner. I have no idea. So Jimmy, or, I'm sorry, Cito uh, uh, played a, 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 you know, a huge role as far as uh, probably keeping me in the big leagues. You know, because obviously your manager, if you're if you're there, your manager will want you there. So he probably played a big role. And he actually lives very close to me here. And I shared a story with him and uh, had a little heart to heart with him as as an old guy. I couldn't as a as a young guy, but uh, it's all I know. Good. I know. Fran- I know. Steve has crossed paths with Francona before. Any of those other names stick out to you, Steve? Well, obviously, Cito, right? I mean, he was he he was there for such a long time and such a great manager. Uh, a lot of names stick out to me. Obviously, none that I really came across as managers that were with me um, at at the time that I broke in the big leagues. But definitely remember some of the ones that you just mentioned. Rapid fire number three. Any particular teammates over the years that stuck out to you, or, or roommates? Anyone bring snakes and bags to the locker room? A- anybody kind of stick out to you as far as uh, one particular person? You know what? This person really, like, you know, I, I really hung out with them, or they were very different. There's always a story, I'm sure. I know no, that, that know, was that was Stephen Cameron. I can't role, by the way. share some of the things that just popped into my head. This was pre <laughs> pre. In- <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> Steve, you're laughing. <laughs> But you know, you just can't share it at all. I mean, as much as you'd like to. Uh, it was pre-internet, pre-cell phones, pre-selfies, pre-social media. I saw stuff at the hotels you wouldn't believe. Times have changed. Oh, yes. Well, I, I they used to, you know, uh, when I was with Toronto, um, Lloyd Mosby got pissed off at me one day because... Uh, uh, he went on the disabled list and I got a chance to play. Now I'm 22 years old. I'm just out playing. I don't care. I'm not thinking about, you know, who's the guy, who's not the guy. I just want to play. And so I, I ended up, you know, doing pretty good. We went on the road trip. I hit really good on the road trip. We came back and one of the veterans took all his fan mail and Took his name off there and put Wally Pip on yeah. all his letters, all all his fan mail, and and he was a star. He was an all star. Yeah, yeah. He got pissed off at me for that. Like I had anything to do with that. So uh, we were in Minnesota, and I went out and I bought myself a brand new pair of green snakeskin shoes. I thought these shoes were the baddest <laughs> shoes of all time. No socks, no socks. I'm sure. No, no, no. I, I, I wasn't a no sock guy. <laughs> so I rolled into the clubhouse with my shoes, and it's getaway day, and we went out and played, and, and we were in. in uh, we went from Minnesota to Kansas City. Uh, 
getaway day. We're going to the airport and we're walking through the airport and I hear click, 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 click. And I'm looking around. What is that noise? Click, 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 click. And I look down on my shoes. Well, sure enough, they put taps on my shoes. They sent them out and put taps on them. Mosby and Barfield and, and Bell. So, uh, other than that, no, you know what? I've had I've been very fortunate to have really good teammates and uh, go from there. Final question as we end today's episode and Rob Ducey, you've been absolutely a gem for giving us your time and sharing the stories and your baseball folklore. And to those baseball fans, MLB fans, Canadians, Toronto Blue Jay fans, ultimately, if to remember Rob Ducey, the baseball player, how would you want to be remembered in fans' minds? Ooh, I've never been asked that. Um, <laughs> And I came up with the Mr. Baseball too, which I did not realize either, which was pretty awesome. No, I think some, someone that respected the game, respected the fans, uh, went out and, you know, played uh, uh, as hard as, as I could daily. Um, uh, the, you know, obviously the fans and, and, and people outside the game don't, don't really know the players and, and the type of teammate you are. But uh, as far as what they see on the field, uh, you know, hustle and, and desire to, to, to do what you can to help your team, you know, be successful. Love it. Now, Rob Ducey, uh, uh, after your playing days, you've also coached, you've scouted, uh, including in Mexico. Looking forward in the baseball future, if uh, Team GM president calls you up and says, I got the ideal role for you, whatever you like, you want to go into broadcasting, you want to go front office, uh, scouting. If you could go back to the game, what do you think you'd like to be doing at this stage of life? Well, first of all, Jonathan, I have the face for radio. And uh, second, I'm, I don't know, I honestly don't know whether my expertise, my my experience, uh, things that that uh, I've, I've gone through X Y Z is is truly valued in this game anymore. I don't think it is. The the analytics, um, the computer doesn't lie, and and analytics is going to be here till. The cows come home. It's it's not going anywhere. I, I get that, but over the course of the last, I would say, ten years, baseball has lost a lot of really good baseball people, and they'll never come back because of just the just how they were let go and the reasons why guys were. Let I've always I've always said that Major League Baseball was missing the boat, and uh, and I was one of those guys that got let let go for whatever reason. Um, and I've been hired, fired, and whatever several times. Um, but Major League Baseball for me has has missed missed the boat as far as the teaching the the old school guy, the fifty something coach with all the experience and all teaching him the analytic world and, and make or getting them to understand the analytic world. Now you have a, a qualified teacher and, and someone who is a lifer in, in the game uh, that understands the, the analytic side as well. It's not that, you know, the older old school guys are, are, you know, anti analytics. No, uh, -uh. It's like okay, explain it to me. Well, they didn't take the time. They just said, you know what? How we're going? We're going with this new stuff. Well, there's a lot of guys that that wanted to continue to 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 coach and and scout and and do those things that were willing to learn it. And they just said, you know what? Uh, see ya. You're you know you're you're old old school. Uh, let's do the right school, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. 
So not nothing. Very true. I get off the Yeah, it's it's very true. He's right. I mean, certain teams were better at uh, advancing guys within their organization and their careers as coaches by te- by actually teaching them Cleveland. I was just very fortunate after I got done playing out of the game a couple of years, got back in with Cleveland and Cleveland was on the forefront of the analytic portion of this. And that's kind of where I've learned all of how to read the numbers, how to go about the numbers with the, on the pitching side. Anyhow, I learned it on the hitting side just because it helped me, uh, you know, be able to, put a plan together against the hitter because of their numbers and what they do well in certain areas of the strike zone and things like that with breaking balls and change ups and fastballs and sliders and so forth. But I was just fortunate enough that I had, you know, uh, the early teachings of the analytics with the Cleveland Indians uh, at, at that time. And then that transferred over to the Milwaukee Brewers and until I stepped down uh, to coach, you know, obviously to coach my son and, and to spend more time with the family. So uh, he's right, though. You know, some some just said, "Hey, we're going with the analytics, and these guys who are younger have learned it. We're going to kind of filter them in, and we're going to kind of push the older generation out." Um, and that's unfortunate, you know, because guys who are coming up within the minor leagues and the big leagues, like they they really want to talk to guys who have experience, who've been on the field, who done what they're trying to accomplish and get to the big leagues and, and play the game the right way. Not that these young guys can't teach it the correct way, but if a player comes to you and say, Hey, you know, it's the eighth inning. This is situation I'm in. What did you do when you were in the box? Some of these younger guys just cannot give that information, that experience and that knowledge to a younger player because they just never done it before. And that's where, again, uh, you know, I think as, as Rob said, that, you know, some of these teams have, have really uh, failed the older coaches in, in trying to teach them and keep them within the game instead of going into the straight front office uh, with the Ivy League schools and, and these guys, these young guys that they hire to run organizations. Um, so, you know, I know we're finishing up here, but uh, I definitely want to thank Rob for joining us. He very, very humbling the way he goes and talks about his career. He was an excellent player, did things the right way, played the game the right way, helped his team win on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, there should be, there should be credit for that uh, amongst, you know, the people who are watching this and, and, and understand the game of baseball. So Rob, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. I know uh, Jonathan was uh, super excited to have you. And when he told, told me that you're coming on, I was like, this is really good, man. Like this is a guy that, you know, uh, played the game the right way, knows the fundamentals. I know it's, you know, you call it old school, but it was just the time that we came up that the things like what we learned were being taught. And, uh, you know, everybody has to adapt to the way the game has changed. And as you said, there's, there's not anything bad about analytics. We just need to balance out the experience with the analytics and use what's right for the individual player to make them more successful. Then you have the best of all worlds, right? That's right. Yep, absolutely. And I got to say from a personal note, my friend group chat was buzzing for the last couple of days because they thought I was putting them on. They're like, no way you found Rob Ducey. Oh my Lord, that's so cool. Oh, I love watching him play. We were talking Rob Ducey for two days. Rob, they love you in Toronto. You're always going to be our guy, our hometown boy that did well, did us proud and inspired the next wave of stars. I mean, you think about the Joey Votto's of this world and all that. Joey Votto is going to the Hall of Fame one day in Cooperstown. He's not doing that if Rob Ducey doesn't blaze the glory for him. So, Rob, thank you for helping the game of baseball, inspiring in our country and worldwide. And you're a credit to this game. You've given so much of your life to it in coaching and scouting and playing. And it's been a true honor having you on today. And the fans appreciate it and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Jonathan, thank you. Steve, thanks. Thanks yeah, so absolutely. much. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. And anytime you guys want me on, uh, I'm more than willing to be a, a, a fourth little window for you guys. Absolutely. That would be fantastic. Be careful what you ask for. You might get it. No, it, you know what? Uh, anytime you get a chance to, to you know, talk about uh, the, the game of baseball and with good people and, and it's, it's really easy.
We do what we can. We do what we can. So we'll see you all real back soon on the Chosen Journey, the podcast.